JBN, we keep you informed. Cuban nurse among latest victims of murder wave. A Cuban national working in the Jamaican health sector is one of six men who were murdered in the past 24 hours as the recent wave of killings continue. This brings to at least 18 the number of murders recorded by the police in the past 72 hours. La Raza Ortega Burrell, a 42-year-old Cuban nurse employed to the University Hospital of the West Indies, was stabbed to death by unknown assailants at his home in Vineyard Town, St. Andrew, just before 7 p.m. on Friday. The other victims have been identified as Audley McIntosh, 34, of Garland in St. James, Farrell Thaw, 50, of Lawrence Tavern in St. Andrew, and Carlos Millard, 49, of Maple and Clarendon. The police say they have not yet ascertained the names of the other two men whose bodies were found in Seaford Town and along Bay Road, both in Westmoreland. According to reports, McIntosh and Thaw, a shop operator, were shot and killed by unknown assailants in their respective communities. The police report that Millard, a heavy equipment operator, was shot dead by unknown assailants at his home on Sewell Crescent in Maypen. Jamaica has recorded over 1,300 murders this year. Soldier among four killed in motor vehicle crashes. A member of the Jamaica Defense Force, the JDF, is among four persons who died on Friday in separate motor vehicle crashes. The latest fatalities bring to 421 the number of persons killed on Jamaica's roadways since the start of the year, according to figures compiled by the Road Safety Unit in the Transport Ministry. The 24-year-old soldier has been identified as Kevin Ferguson of Slipe District in St. Elizabeth. According to reports, Ferguson was found entangled in barbed wire lying beside a motorcycle on the Byberry Main Road. The other victims are Lennox Brown, otherwise called Nix, of Lucky Hill in Gill, St. Mary, Kenroy Lewis, who resided in Jericho District in Kellitz, Clarendon, and John Mills, who resided in Galena, St. Mary. According to reports, at about 4.30 a.m. on Friday, Lewis was driving a motor car along the Braco Main Road with Mills and another man as passengers. Lewis reported a lost control of the vehicle, which collided with a motor truck, resulting in the car overturning. The injured persons were taken to the hospital where Lewis and Mills were pronounced dead. Two other injured persons were admitted for medical treatment. The driver of the motor truck was also treated for minor injuries at the hospital and was released. The Chiloni police have since launched a probe into the incident. Brown was reportedly hit by a motor vehicle as he walked along the Lucky Hill main road. With the rise in fatalities, the Road Safety Unit RSU in the Ministry of Transport and Mining has continued to appeal to motorists to desist from speeding on the roads. Sexual abuse the Maxfield 12-year-old is word of state. The Child Protection and Family Services Agency, CPFSA, has confirmed reports that the 12-year-old girl that her man was last week caught having sex with is a ward of the state. In a statement on Thursday evening, the CPFSA also confirmed that the child was reintegrated with her father and grandmother, but the agency could not disclose any other details of the case. In keeping with our client confidentiality protocol, we are unable to provide details as to the reason this child was placed in state care. As you are aware, this is an active investigation and provision of any intricate details will compromise the case and identity of this child, the statement read. It was reported on Thursday that a Maxfield Avenue St. Andrew Mason was on the run after he was allegedly caught on Monday sexually assaulting a 12-year-old girl whose family had employed him to provide finishing touches to their home. A resident said that the child confessed that the Mason gave her $200. Commenting on the reintegration of children into their families, the CPFSA outlined the steps taken before this is done. Prior to a child being reintegrated with his or her family, preparation is done at all levels. The child is prepared through counseling and other intervention. School visits are conducted prior, during, and after this process. The children's officer signed conducts ongoing checks with the family to ensure that there is no breakdown in the placement. In this case, the officer signed to this child conducted a school visit on Friday, December 13, and a home visit on Monday, December 16, as a usual part of our monitoring procedure, the CPFSA said. The Child Welfare Agency said that children placed in an institution are monitored by a team of officers who conduct announced and unannounced visits to facilities islandwide. 
Monitoring is also done at foster homes in holiday placements, adoption, supervision, and reintegration with families. Every child who is placed in the formal child protection system is paired with a social worker or children's officer who conducts regular visits to monitor the child's progress and to ensure that the children's care plan is being followed, the agency said. Approximately 15,000 abuse cases were referred to the CPFSA in 2018 alone. Police to roll out new technologies next year. Cars fitted with a smart system that will allow cops to do on-the-spot checks of individuals and motor vehicles are among a range of new technologies to be rolled out by the Jamaican police next year. Jamaica's police chief, Major General Anthony Anderson, has signaled that as part of his plan to improve the use of technology within the Jamaica Constabular Force, JCF, police cars are to be fitted with a license plate recognition, LPR cameras. We have a suite of technologies coming out in 2020, Anderson disclosed on Friday. You will have LPR cameras on cars. So they are just checking random cars behind you, cars in front of you, and they can flag these cars from there and send it back to 119 Center, he explained. Anderson disclosed, too, that the police radio system will be fully restored and that the JCF has already completed an upgrade of its microwave network, which is expected to end the use of archaic station diaries. You can carry five times the amount of data you're carrying. Every single thing we have been talking about, we are doing, he insisted, while addressing the first batch of policemen and women to graduate from the JCF's Law Enforcement Instructors Training Course at the National Police College of Jamaica in Twickenham Park, St. Catherine. Seventeen cops who participated in the course graduated with a postgraduate diploma in law enforcement training and were promoted one rank. It's a good day for some promotion, the commissioner declared, setting off celebrations among the course participants. Anderson explained that implementation of the new technologies will be phased over a two-year period. What that means is that we are likely to outpace or change management, he said. The commissioner said that the JCF plans to ramp up recruitment next year, but warned that there will be a whole new range of recruitment methods. Anderson urged the policemen and women who participated in the course to help the JCF root out colleagues with bad attitudes and integrity issues and to be respectful to each other and the persons they serve. If we respect the least of us, then we will respect everyone else. It doesn't require disrespect to get anything done. We can be as firm as ever and still have respect. It is that cycle of disrespect that we need to interrupt, he said. Compensation lifts spirits of Mapen market vendors. The somber mood of Mapen vendors, whose dreams of a Merry Christmas were scorched by a market fire three weeks ago, were lifted on Thursday after they were gifted compensation by the Ministry of Labor and Social Security and the Clarendon Municipal Corporation. Stating that compensation usually took months to be disbursed, Winston Mirage, Mayor of Maypen, said he was grateful to members of the government who came on board to assist the vendors. May Afi give thanks, may feel good, every mickle make a muckle, said Daniel Morrison, a vendor. Sharing the sentiment of gratitude, Gloria Johnson said, I am very happy that somebody cares. It's not even what you get but to know somebody care. CEO of the Clarendon Municipal Corporation, Ron Blake, said that while the cause of the fire was still unconfirmed, assessments revealed vulnerabilities that officials say they intend to remedy. And vendors have also been urged by a parish manager of the Ministry of Labor and Social Security, Warren Green, to ensure their property to insulate themselves from major tragedy. Going forward, those hazards will be eliminated, Blake said. Meanwhile, commercial services manager at the corporation, Nikita Francis, called for fee compliance among vendors. She also announced that new vending spots were to be allocated on Monday, the height of the Christmas shopping season. Counsel for the Denby Division, Joel Williams, thanked the Prime Minister, as well as Clarendon Central Member of Parliament, Mike Henry, and other stakeholders for swift action in the recovery process. On the day of the fire, when we saw what happened, we thought the government had to intervene. I am grateful to the stakeholders for the little token, he added. The Maypen market was turned to charred rubble after a massive fire destroyed the infrastructure and possessions on Sunday, December 1. Municipal authorities bowed to pressure from the vendors after a plan to relocate them to various sections of the parish capital was fiercely rejected. 
The market was cleaned in time for the resumption of sales on December 13, but that will be a temporary reprieve until a new facility is constructed. Lorraine Green Mason, president of the Maypen Vendors Association, said that the speed of the governmental intervention was remarkable. JBN, we keep you informed. Please remember to like, subscribe, share, leave us a comment and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.